Today is July 13th, 2009. We are at the home of Mr. William Barnes, Jr. And we're going to talk a little bit about um, both him and his mother, who we interviewed last week. My name is Ann Horvath, and John Fershbeck is on the, is working the camera. Mr. Barnes, where were you born? I was born in the house on the other farm. On the other farm? Well, it's all that hooked together, but it's on Gillis Road. Okay. Um, where was your mother born? My mother was born about a mile north of Mount Airy on the farm that's now on Lysher Road. Okay. Be on the east side of 27. And she lived there for about how long? I'm not sure, uh, but at a very early age, they left there and moved to the corner of Buffalo Road and Shirley Boone Road. Your mother talked a lot about where she went to school. Do you know which school she, she started at? School. Okay. And uh, they lived there. Her, she lost her sister first Do you, in the flu epidemic. Okay. And then her mother died of tuberculosis, I believe. Was her sister married at the time? Her sister was married. Her sister was married to Prentice Van Zandt, who's mm -hmm. the father of the Van Zandt, to whom Van Zandt plumbing and heating, and okay. her grandfather, maybe. But anyway, her sister died when she's one year old, and they had one son, Marine, we call him Junior, and he came to live with my mother's family till my, till my grandma, till her mother died, and then uh, he, he went back with his father, and shortly after that, uh, my mother and her father moved to Taylorsville. And where in Taylorsville? Uh, uh, the house right across from where the roost used to be. Mm -hmm. if, but not counting all the new, well, you know where the vet place is yes. in Taylorsville, but it's the next house on the right. Mm -hmm. And uh, they lived there until her father passed away, and then she went to live with her brother and his family, and that would be the first ha first farm going out of Taylorsville towards Winfield on the left. Mm -hmm. And that's still in the family. She um, talked about a couple of schools. Uh, did she go to school in Taylorsville? Yeah, she went to school in Harrisville, and, and then, then she moved to Taylorsville. She went to school in Taylorsville, the, and then for high school, she went to Mount Airy. Okay, okay, and she talked about driving or riding the horse. Right. I understand. If I understand it, she rode with her brother while he was going to school, and then when he graduated, he was a couple of years older than her. When he graduated, then she drove a horse. That's to. Uh, and they had a stable across the road from the school where they used to stable the horses. But she drove and took a couple other girls with her. Yeah, she talked about that. Did she drive a carriage or a wagon? Do you know? Uh, no, I don't. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming it would have been a buggy, but I don't know that for sure. But mm -hmm. I, I would say so. She talked about her hands being cold, so obviously well, they, they were. <laughs> drove in the winter months yeah. and through all kinds of weather. Probably colder coming home than I was going out because okay. you're always into the wind coming home. Always into the wind. Um, okay. Now you think her mother died of tuberculosis? I think. Uh huh. One of them died of tuberculosis. One of them died of the flu. Uh huh. And I'm thinking that her sister died of the flu and her mother tuberculosis, but um, that's that's always been a little fuzzy. Uh huh. She talked a little bit about her grandfather, Jacob Nail. Right. Do you remember hearing her talk about him? Yeah. He lived in, in Watersville. And my whole life, I have tried to get from her what he did for a living. I'm assuming a farm. But all mm -hmm. she ever say, he worked in the straw shed at Watersville. In the straw shed? In, in other words, I guess farmers would bring straw in to mm -hmm. ship on the train or something. I mean, in those days it would have been all loose straw too because mm -hmm. it didn't bail it yet. Right. But that's, you know, I can't, I don't know. And, and when they lived at Harrisville, he used to walk from Watersville to Harrisville all the time with his dog name. He had a dog. Uh -huh. and, uh, they used to walk over there. I don't know whether they ever had a car. I have pictures of it. Uh-huh. Uh, 
but I, I know very little bit about him, and all she would ever say was he worked in the straw shed. Well, you know, I know he didn't do now, that. Now, uh, his wife had died earlier? Yeah. Uh, probably wasn't very old, but I, you know, I, uh -huh. and I have those dates someplace oh, that's but, okay. uh, right off the top. So he'd been a widow or for a number of years when she knew right. him. Right. Yeah. And did he have a lot of children, do you know? Uh, Mom's father and two daughters, I believe. Uh -huh. That you remember yes. hearing about. Right. Well, I knew one of them. Uh -huh. Your mother talked about dancing, and I couldn't get a clear picture of what she was talking about. Do you remember hearing? Well, that was always a big thing to her: dancing and singing, and, and uh, yeah. Who was musically talented? She, yeah, pretty much. For never having had any lessons, I mean, mm -hmm. she used to play a banjo and she could play the piano. I mean, you know, not good, but we thought it was because didn't have anything to compare it to. But you, right, you know, right. Yeah. Enough to keep everybody and entertained. Dance, she'd get up on the floor and used to show us how they used to dance in the 20s, you know, all that. Mm hmm. Which is equivalent to jitterbugging or rock and roll to us, I guess. But yeah. How about her, her father or her grandfather? Did either of those play I a think music? They were all pretty musically inclined, yeah. Uh, I mean, I stopped that trend. <laughs> I can't even play a radio. Uh, <laughs> uh huh. But she would dance and play music for family entertainment yeah, mostly. Yeah, she played the piano and her and Papa would sing. And, uh, uh huh. I don't know. Have you ever interviewed anybody that talked about Beth Franklin's dance hall? I've I know about that. I mean, that dance was hall, a famous. That, uh, did she? That was back in the '40s and during the war. That was the big thing around here. Did she? And she went there. Oh uh, well. She was married then, and we uh -huh. went up to the store on Saturday night, up to the store meaning Taylorsville. Right. And and we'd stop there in the lot because the music, I mean, we could be at home in the summertime and open our windows and hear the music uh -huh. up there. And Hank Williams and Patsy, well, it wasn't, that was before Patsy Klein's time, but, you know, all the old singer. I remember Hank Williams. And... Uh, yeah, but we'd stop up there and listen to the music. Of course, sit in the uh, parking lot and yeah, hear the music. Kids were little, you know, sure. and mom and pop would stop in there and and, and enjoy the music. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was a famous dance hall in the area. Yeah. yeah, I mean, some people went to dance, some people went to fight. <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Probably wasn't. Uh, and they had just paid Gillis Road down as far as Savages, where Savage is now, and uh, the boys would bring their cars over there, and that straight stretch of road on Gillis Road, uh -huh. and they'd race their cars there. That was, that was, Saturday night was a big deal. <laughs> I mean, what, anything else going on? You know, well, was, it was the community entertainment, that's I right. I was in Denver one time, and a guy asked me where I was from, and I was being smart, and I said, Taylorsville. You know, I think nobody knows where it's. Oh, I know where that's at. Bass Franklin's dance hall, he said. And this was in Denver. <laughs> was, well, do you remember his name? Well, or was he? Where it was. Was so he, he from the Army? Army, some uh -huh. like station yeah. around here. And uh, they, they mm. came up there to yeah. the dance. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, I've heard stories like that. Um, your mother got married about 1933 or 34? I'm, yeah, 33, I think. Okay, yeah, I think that's what she think. told it. Yeah. Uh, and she met, your father's name was? Same as mine. Mm -hmm. Called him Herman. Call, I noticed that, yeah, on here it was Herman. Yeah. It, so it was William Herman? Right. So he called him Herman. Yeah. yeah. And His father was William Henry Hanson, and they called him Willie. And then our cousin, he was William T. He just passed away a couple months ago, or last spring. There was five William Barnes, <coughs> and back in the old days, <coughs> we just got our mail down there in Maryland. Didn't right. have anything else. And there was five William Barnes here, but the letter carrier knew he could look at the writing or the return address. Mm -hmm. he, he got it right most of the time. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> So when they got married, they, they bought a farm? Or right. Now, the farm, 
that's on Gillis Road, that's, mm -hmm. that's our family's homestead. The original Barnes homestead is up behind Taylorsville Church. Okay. Uh, my great great grandfather gave the ground to that for that church in 1867 or 78 or something. That sounds like about that. right. And that's that's I'm told that's where we all come from. Uh -huh. and, uh, that's the Barneses. That's the Barneses. Right? Mm -hmm. And uh, we were some uh, I'm told, and I read this. But I, I don't know where I read it, but I have read that the Barneses were some of the first settlers in the Taylorville area in, in the mid-1700s. I'm sure that's true. Your mother's mother was a Harrison. And My mother was a Nail. Her oh, mother was a Harrison. Harrison. Okay, yeah. Her mom. And where were they from? The, the Nails were from Germany. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I'm told they came to this country in the mid 1700s and landed in Philadelphia and migrated down this way. They lived around Chambersburg and Greencastle for a while and they moved into the Tonytown area. I think a lot of them are buried around Tonytown. Mm -hmm. And then they got on down into the Sam's Creek area and uh, lived there. And uh, then I, I guess, my grandfather, my mother's father, probably when he started farming, he probably rented the farm in Mount Airy where my mother was born. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I never knew him, but uh, evidently he was a pretty industrious gentleman. And uh, they moved from Mount Airy to Harrisville and then from Harrisville to Taylorsville and my father my grandfather bought a couple of farms up around Sam's Creek and got into fertilizer business. And not that he was a bad manager, but his timing was bad because he did all that in 1929. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he lost the farms in the Depression because mm -hmm. he couldn't pay the real estate taxes. Lots of farmers lost farms. Which would have been less than $100 probably. Right. Because I've seen that. My father's real estate taxes on the other farm down there in 1934, 154 acres, and real estate taxes was $90. So I'm figuring his would have been about the same, mm -hmm. and you lose the farm because you can't pay $90 in taxes. So uh, anyway, so that's, and then uh, it, my ancestry gets confusing because back probably in the late teen, 1800s, one of my ancestors got married two or three times. All his wives had died and he had mm -hmm. children by each wife and I never really got all that clear. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, mm -hmm. Well, lots of young women died. They did. Yeah. And my grandfather, my th sister, uh, married Burgess Condon. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, she had like, I think three boys, and then she died uh, at, in her 30s. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. So a man with young children married pretty quickly. Probably, yeah. 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 And they usually always married somebody else in the community that they right. already knew. Right, yeah. 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 Uh, it, your mother uh, worked on the farm pretty much as... Right. They got married in 1933, if I understand it, and Austin Condon, whether you've heard that name or not, but his father had the farm across Gillis Road from the other farm. Okay. And he lost that in the Depression. Austin Condon was a pretty ingenious guy. Now that's Bill Nell's father-in-law, Gene Nell, that lives over here. That was her father. But anyway, he told me this, that uh, he went to work for Pop when Pop got married, and I think he was 15, and his salary was $15 a month, mm -hmm. room and board. And the night that my parents got married, they slept up in this room in this house upstairs. And the next morning, they hooked two horses to the spring wagon and tied an old Guernsey cow on the back. And Mom and Pop and Austin went down over the hill to go to farming. Wow. <laughs> and uh, then, uh, 
and and he bought that farm mm -hmm. from my father. Now that this these farms have never been inherited. Every generation has bought them from the previous generation. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So, did they? Was it general farming, or were they dairy farmers? In the beginning, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, my father was a, a really good cowman and a good horseman, and he broke some horses for other farmers around. Mm -hmm. And then in the 1949, we took the horse stables because we had just bought a tractor. That was our first tractor. And, and he, he, we tore the horse stables out of the barn down there and fixed it up to sell class one milk. Mm -hmm. And we got into dairy business. And where did Before you ship Before that, to? we had mm -hmm. milked a few cows. It was class three milk. And before that, they had milk cows just for the cream and took it over to Winfield. Mm -hmm. so, so you started shipping milk regularly right. to, and where did you ship to? Baltimore. Baltimore. Uh, so your mother was, probably had, did the gardens and, and took care of the house. You had chickens right. probably, right. hogs, all the things. Right. Do you remember butchering? Oh, yeah. Yeah? yeah. And you were telling us the difference between the German and English butchering practices. Well, I don't know much about the practice. I'll just mention that one thing, that what people call scrapple, we call pawn horse. And, well, we didn't call it that. It was called pawn horse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they just kind of slurred it. I mean, I'm sure my family didn't even know the correct pronunciation. Of it, sure. But it was pawn horse. Yeah. Pawn house in German. Yeah, pawn house. Right. right. They probably didn't know that. <clears throat> it means pan rabbit. Uh, I don't know what it means, but anyway, that's, yeah, uh, I just can't think of any specifics, but there was some German influence around here. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Building design, barn design, uh, house design. Uh, uh, what kind of barn design did you would you say is kind of German? Uh, well, I, to my knowledge, it, it is. I, mm -hmm. I'm not sure of that, but I'm all the barns sure, right. are pretty much the same. Mm -hmm. Tenant mortise barns, bank mm -hmm. barns. Mm -hmm. A lot of bank barns in this area. They, in, in, in those days, the barns were designed. Uh, Everything was hand labor anyway, so you didn't have to get machinery in mm -hmm. them, you know. So then when the machinery come along, they were kind of, at least the bottom parts of them were obsolete because the only thing you could get in there, any any implement you took in had a handle in it, you mm -hmm. know. It didn't have wheels on it. <laughs> and so you uh, had to modify the bottoms of the barns. The tops still used to store hay. Mm -hmm. But even the hay storage was a bit different pretty quickly with the bales oh, yeah. versus... we had, uh, that was, yeah, we, we handled all the hay loose. Mm -hmm. We had a dump rake, and we raked the hay up, mowed it with horses and a five-foot cutter bar. And I did all this. And then raked it with a dump rake, and then dried the wagon. Well, <clears throat> our horses, you didn't have to drive them. Pop could just talk to them. And... You know, you had these piles of hay, and he'd tell the horses to move up to the next pile, and he threw it on the wagon with forks, and mm -hmm. uh, took it in the barn, and had a hay fork track over the top of the barn, and, and and he brought the fork down, stuck it in the hay, and then you had two horses, we'd unhook the lead horses, when you pulled the wagon in the barn, you unhook the lead horses, and the wheel horses would pull it in the barn, and you'd take the leaders and hook them to the hay fork, and then... They'd pull out and they would pull up and they'd 